Hi, I'm Nicholas, and I'm happy to talk about some work on poisoning the unlabeled data set of semi-supervised learning. So we all know that over the last couple of years, machine learning has really taken off and has gotten to really impressive, incredible levels of accuracy. And this is in no small part due to the existence of large labeled data sets that allow us to train ever increasingly large models. And until recently, the only way that you could train a model is if you had a big labeled data set. Um, other techniques really didn't work. Um, and the problem is that in many domains, you just don't have big label data sets. Or in some cases, you have big label data sets, but they're not even big enough. And in both of those settings, um, there's actually a technique that's called semi-supervised learning, which allows us to train without having to collect big labeled data sets. And even today, if you look at like what the best techniques are on even classical supervised problems like ImageNet, you find that all of the best techniques require extensive amount of extra training data and you have to like go all the way down to like position 25 in the best papers list to find the best ImageNet model that doesn't require using extra training data. And so what semi-supervised learning does is it basically turns this problem of fully supervised training. Um, I'm going to use this running example of blue triangles versus red circles. It turns this, this fully supervised problem where you had someone sit down and label all the triangles as blue and label all the circles as red into a now a semi-supervised problem where we have maybe one example of a labeled red circle and one example of a labeled blue triangle. And we ask the model to teach itself on this fact where even though we only have labeled these two examples, we now have these other like shapes available for the model to learn from. And the way it's gonna work is the models sort of draw a decision boundary initially located just around the examples that they know the label of and they slowly grow this decision boundary out. And so it will initially label the points nearby the same way and repeat this growing out until eventually we've labeled the whole data set essentially correctly. And now we just train fully supervised on this now labeled data set. This gives us a very nice decision boundary and the model has learned to do the right thing even though we only gave it two labeled data points in this very toy example. And so the question that we're going to study and the argument we're going to make um, is what happens when there's an adversary who can poison the unlabeled data. And what we're going to say is that poisoning the unlabeled data set is actually a real threat that we should be worried about. And in order to convince you of this, I'm going to make the argument in this way. I'm going to say first that semi-supervised learning matters. And I hope at this point I've already convinced you of this fact. Um, there are lots of domains where we just don't have large labeled data sets. And even when we do, we still use semi-supervised learning even today um, because we can get even bigger data sets by making use of extra unlabeled data. Then I'm going to have to convince you of the fact that unlabeled data sets can be poisoned. Uh, why is it that an adversary should actually be allowed to poison these? And finally, I have to convince you our attack actually works. So let me move on to the next point then and, talk, and now convince you why I think it is that unlabeled data should be considered some, a real threat that can be poisoned. And basically the argument is that for a long time we've had you know, ImageNet and these labeled data sets that are very hard to poison. And this was constructed once and unless you got poisoning samples in there in the beginning, uh, you're not going to get any poison samples into any ImageNet models today. But for unlabeled data sets, there's gathered by essentially scraping the entire internet uh, without regard for quality um, to just get as much data as possible. And they constantly are, the data sets are getting bigger and bigger as more and more images are added to these data sets um, in order to be able to train them um, on with bigger models. And when you're doing this, when you're just scraping the internet for to get as much data as possible, you really have to believe that there is going to be some fraction of the internet that's just malicious. Some people just want to watch the world burn and are going to upload images for the sole purpose of poisoning the machine learning models to do bad things. And so as before, you had to maybe make some kind of contrived argument for why you could fool the human operator into accepting your images into the, uh, into the labeled data sets. Here, when you have unlabeled images that you're just crawling from the internet and, and including into data sets, um, it's very easy. You just upload an image to the internet and it will be crawled and included in the data set. And so that's really why I think that this poisoning the unlabeled data set really is like a very powerful uh, threat model to start considering. Um, and, you know, under this assumption, um, 
we're now going to introduce an attack um, that is really quite simple. It's going to use some ideas from the literature from the last uh, decade or so uh, in order to do a very powerful um, targeted poisoning attack. Um, so what we're going to do is, as I said, a targeted poisoning attack. And what this means is we're going to have a particular point in space where if we have the correct decision boundary, we want the model to learn the slightly wrong decision boundary. So it's mostly correct. But this particular error here um, is classified incorrectly. Maybe, for example, you have a face recognition model that's going to either allow or deny people into a building, and I want to make sure that my name is incorrectly placed on the allowed list of people allowed in the building. So how are we going to do this? Well, um, you know, let's imagine we were in the fully supervised world. Um, the attack here is, is really easy, right? In the fully supervised setting, all you have to do is insert a poisoned mislabeled blue circle, train the model on this data set, and it will do exactly what you expect and mislabel this data point um, because you've put it so close. Okay, so that works, but we can't inject a mislabeled data point here. Um, that's not in the threat model. We're assuming unlabeled data. And so you could still imagine trying to put a circle here, uh, but the problem is that the machine learning algorithm, the semi-supervised learning algorithm as it trains, will just label it correctly as a red circle. And it will learn maybe an even better decision boundary than it had before, and so the attack will have completely failed. And so what we're gonna do in our attack is instead of inserting just one poisoned example, we're gonna insert a bunch. We're gonna insert a path of examples that connect the two classes together. And now what happens is if you run the training algorithm forwards, you'll initially label the nearest neighbors the same way, propagate this forward a little more, propagate forward a little more, and you start to see the examples on this path now being labeled uh, incorrectly. Like we've reached the decision boundary here and we've gone a little bit further than we should have along this blue way. Uh, but something interesting happens here. Because of the way that semi-supervised learning works, this point here, this, this sort of arrangement of labels actually has very high loss for the model. Uh, because of something that's called consistency regularization, the model really wants to make sure that it labels everything within the same radius the same. And so this is, this is a, a very big saddle point in the loss surface. And so what's going to happen is that either the red points are going to win and push everything along this path towards um, to be all labeled red, or the blue points are going to win and everything will be labeled blue. And because there are more blue points at this point, uh, the blue points win and they end up out overpowering the red and everything along this path becomes labeled as blue. Now equally valid, it could have happened that everything here becomes labels as red, um, but because we're the adversary, you know, we can just set things up in such a way, uh, and in the paper I, we go into details on, on how to make this actually happen, uh, so that it, it, it always ends up that the, the blue ends up winning. Um, and you can end up now when you train on this, of course, uh, it ends up training and giving you the, exactly the same decision boundary we, we could have done with a fully supervised poisoning, uh, where we have you know, correctly perturbed the decision boundary. But here we only ever had the ability to inject unlabeled data points. So really we're like, abusing the, the way the semi-supervised learning even works in the first place in order to allow us as the adversary to do something else that was not intended in the first place. Okay. Um, there are a lot of results we have in the paper. Um, I'm not gonna go into those in details, but I'd encourage you to take a look. Um, the one experiment I will talk about um, is this one. And what we do here is we train a bunch of models. Each point here corresponds to the average of 10 different models uh, that were trained according to a number of different training algorithms. Um, on the x-axis is how well the model performs at the original underlying task. Like what's the accuracy uh, on the CIFAR 10 data set? Uh, and this varies from everything from 50% to almost 100%, like 98%, 97%. And then on the y-axis, uh, we have the attack success rate. This is how often our attack actually able succeeded at poisoning the model. And what we find is there's a really clear relationship between models that do better along the x-axis, more accurate models, and models that are easier to poison along the y-axis. And the intuition here that we have is that the models that are better can take more information in, in, out of the training data and learn more from it. And this exact ability to learn more out of, from the training data is what the adversary is able to use to make the model learn to do the wrong thing. And in particular, this means that simply waiting longer is not going to make this problem go away. 
in particular probably make it go worse because the future techniques are going to be even better than these older techniques and are going to make these attacks even easier. Also in the paper, it uh, turns out you can completely prevent this particular attack and we have a technique to do that. I think this will serve as an interesting baseline for future work, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore in the talk. So what I want to finish with are some lessons for what I think are the future of machine learning research. What we used to do, like before machine learning, is we would write a program that specifies how we wanted this triangle versus circle classification to go and tell the computer exactly what to do. And with machine learning, we sort of moved on beyond that. We're no longer telling the computer exactly how we want something to done. Instead, we give it examples of the thing being done. Here are blue triangles, here are red circles, and ask it to figure out how to do this itself. And this has problems like adversarial examples, but at least it's well specified. The problem with semi-supervised learning is that we're no longer specifying exactly what problem we want the algorithm to solve. Instead, we're just giving it a couple of labeled examples and hoping it figures out the right problem to solve and does it in some reasonable way. And the general problem we've shown here is that an adversary who can inject labeled exa unlabeled examples here can cause the model to do something the adversary wants by making it easier to learn this than the actual benign task. So the real conclusion here is that poisoning the unlabeled data sets is going to become a real thing. Uh, unlabeled data sets are commonly collected now and all kinds of algorithms from semi-supervised learning to self-supervised learning to who knows what's gonna happen in the future are going to make use of these unlabeled data sets because they're going to have to. And so it's gonna be the security community's job to figure out what we're going to do to allow the machine learning community to keep on pushing in this direction of using larger and larger unlabeled data sets. Um, in this paper, we have an idea for how to protect the unlabeled data sets of semi-supervised learning. Um, but how to solve this problem in general and what other attacks are going to look like is really something interesting that I hope we consider um, studying over the next couple of years.